Welcome to After Class Talk 2021 on International Student Series Episode 5, International Students Buddies. Everyone need a buddy, don't they? Someone to guide you, help you, and care for you, no matter what. Well, with all of the heartless and difficulties that come one's way while pursuing higher education abroad, the need for a buddy has never been greater. To ease the transition process and to make the international students feel more welcome in the new surroundings, many universities have started a great system for international students called the International Body System. And in this episode, there will be a sharing session from the International Students Body Club from several universities in Indonesia and abroad on how they handle the international students. My name is Hilda from the International Office Student Body Club and I am the moderator for today. First of all, thank you for joining us today and I would like to welcome our distinguished guests. Director of Strategic Partnership and International Office, Ibulia Yuldinawati, STMM. Welcome. Manager of International Office, Ibu Indah Fajarwati. Welcome, Hi. Ibu Indah. Hi, thank you. Assistant Manager of International Mobility, Ibulia Marlia. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Assistant Manager of International Services, Ibu Mefti Septian. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Ibu Mefti. And also, we have our speakers. Christian Matthew Maborang from Student Body Club, Mapua University, Philippines. Matthew Bultom from Student Body Club, Universitas Gajah Mada. Hello, everyone. Wisnu Duyon from Student Body Club, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Hello, everyone. And Aisha Suci Utomo from International Office Student Body Club, Chalkam University. Hello. And also, I would like to welcome all international students and all our students from Indonesia. Hello, everyone, and welcome. So after class talk is more than a chit chat program. It will be a place for exchanging culture and sharing experience. So in this program, we will have an open discussion so that all of you can uh, freely ask a question to each other. And now I would like to tell the rules of the event. So here is the rules. First, all participants should turn on the camera during the event. Second, all participants should turn off the microphone during the speaker's presentation and may turn on the microphone during open discussion session. During the open discussion, all participants can ask questions to the guest speakers or to other participants. For those who want to ask questions directly to the guest speakers or to other participants, kindly use thumbs up icon on the reactions feature. The participants can drop the question on the chat feature as well. And lastly, there will be a door prize during the event. So for warming up, what about we are having a Kahoot games right now and there will be a prize of course for the winner. So please open the web kahoot.id and enter the pin.
We can start the game right now. Okay, there are some programs of international students, but except yes, it's quite easy. There are some essentials as a body, which one is unnecessary? When was the first body program in the world? Wow. It is an interesting question. Son for winning the Kahoot game and you will get 100,000 rupiah in the form of Ling Aja or Ofo or GoPay. Don't forget to send us your number later. Okay, now we would like to invite the students buddy who will share how they handle the international students in their university. We have four speakers in total and for the first speaker we would like to invite uh, Matthew Gultong from Universitas Gajah Mada and he is the president of International Body Club Universitas Gajah Mada. Please welcome Matthew. Yes, hello, good afternoon everyone. 
Uh, so for this presentation, should I be the one to present or okay? Okay, can you go back to the first page, please? Yes, all right. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Goltom. I am from uh, Universitas Gajamada. I'm from batch of 2018. I major in nuclear engineering and I am the president of Universitas Gajamada UKM Buddy Club. Very nice to meet you all. So today I'm going to present a little bit about Buddy Club, what we do, what are our responsibilities, what are our values as a buddy, and what are the benefits of being in UGM's uh, International Buddy Club. So next slide, please. Okay, so first of all, we are under the, the, the direct supervision of the Office of International Affairs of Universitas Gajah Mada. And since UGM has a lot of partnerships with universities from all over the world, we get uh, numerous, a large amount of international students every single semester. They range from somewhere about either 70 to 200 international students uh, every semester, usually since it's per semester. The August batch, August to December batches are usually a lot larger than our January to June batches. I think the peak was back in 2000 and, uh, 2019, we had 220 international students on uh, the semester ganjil, which is in uh, August. So yeah, dividing that into our members of Buddy Club, which is only ranging from 40 to 50, we had to give each international student, uh, sorry, in each local buddy, five international students for them to handle. Uh, okay, so next slide, please. What is UGM Buddy Club? We are a group of UGM students who are committed to provide assistance to UGM's international students in academic and non-academic matters. So basically, yes, as you all know, our job is to welcome them and give them a positive environment on campus in order for them to feel comfortable in UGM as their second academic home and not feel like they're being ostracized or they are being uh, some, uh, not make them feel like they are an alien in our country and our university. Next slide, please. So we are under the direct supervision of OEA UGM. Basically what they do is they give us intensive discussions and consultations for designing our programs and our program implementation. This is because uh, this is an, all our programs are official programs for the international students. They have strict quality control and direct supervision so that we don't make like subpar events and they are all like up to the standard of UGM's international, well, standard. We also get financial support from OEA UGM to yeah, guarantee the quality of our events. And we also get capacity buildings as a return to help us grow as individuals, as students to prepare us for the you know professional world in the future well I'll, I'll explain more about later but there's more of a benefit that we get from being directly under oh yeah okay um, next slide please so recruitment process we're very strict about our recruitment we have to make sure that every single one of our local buddies are fit to accompany and guide our international students so that no bad representations of ugm values get outputted into these international students. Next slide, please. Okay, so the eligibilities are, they are active undergraduate and diploma students at UGM. They are proficient in English or any other foreign language. They are of course in, interested in cultural activities and have a strong commitment. So basically what we value on our local buddies is they are number one, able to communicate with these international students our main priority is them being able to speak English, but if they don't have a strong English proficiency, but they are able to speak languages such as Korean or Japanese or any other foreign language, we're more than happy to accept them. And of course, at the end of the day, all our interviews are personality-based to see if they are fit to interact with these international students at the end of the day. What are our job descriptions? When you become a local buddy, you are assigned to a specific international students 
uh, sometimes they can range more than one. Uh, our peak was like, you know, as I said earlier, five international students for each local buddy. And your job is to welcome them, show them around, take them to their costs or homestay, show them where they can find good food, to buy furniture, technology, get them the SIM cards, et cetera, et cetera. And also we assist the Office of International Affairs on several international events and visitations. You become a committee for these collaborations. Usually when OEA has certain events and they want to have students as a committee, usually Ugen Buddy Club is their priority to recruit these students at the end of the day. And of course, we get an opportunity to do voluntary or internship programs at OEA. And we attend our weekly meetings to get updates on what our local buddies are doing with their international students. Next slide, please. The benefits of being an Ugen Buddy Club member. As I said before, we get direct information for exchange programs, volunteering programs, and international events from OEA UGM. Since OIA UGM is the like the center of these international events that go on in UGM, and since we are directly under them, we get a direct hotline of what the newest events are, the newest exchange programs, and we always get first pick. Because yeah, this these are the rewards for the quite large responsibility of you know representing UGM towards these international students. We are also OIA UGM's first choice in recruiting for committee members for handling events. We get internship opportunities from OEA UGM. You can see that in the picture. That was me at the end of my internship program. I'm the guy in the red shirt. You can tell I am very happy with my wide smile. We also, yeah, of course, as students, we get more international exposure and we also get friends from all over the world. This is something that I don't stress enough. This is the best and most rewarding part of being a uh, local buddy. Like I've had, I've been in UGM Buddy Club for, uh, four semesters and every single semester, I always get a friend who tells me, hey, if you come to my home country, you're welcome to stay at my house. So now I have free accommodation if I go to Japan, Germany, French, France, the UK, and Australia. So yeah, that is a big plus for me. Okay, next slide, please. This is our organizational uh, structure. As you can see, I'm the president. We have program affairs, HRD, finance, media relations, and external relations. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, our events, programs, and semester plans. Next slide, please. There are two sides to this. Number one, in non-pandemic circumstances, and secondly, yet during COVID season, I'm going to go through them one by one. Next slide, please. So for our non-pandemic circumstances, we have four main events and one like minor event that we have. Our first of all is of course our welcoming dinner, which we hold at the beginning of every semester. We gather up all the international students and their local buddies so they can mingle, get to know each other, get the atmosphere of the friendliness of UGM Buddy Club and whatnot. And yeah, basically we have dinner together and have fun. Next slide, please. Next, we have cultural exposure. This is usually uh, in the middle of the semester, but before the midterms where we take them around Yogyakarta and cultural hotspots like uh, Candi Borobudur. We take them to make batik and whatnot, uh, a tour towards in, uh, traditional foods and whatnot to show them what, deep, what the deep cultural values of Yogyakarta are. Next slide, please. And then after midterms, we go cultural sightseeing outside of Yogyakarta on city tours. We usually rent a bus and go for a whole day to cities near Yogyakarta. Like for example, we went to Samarang, we went to Solo, we went to Malang and whatnot. And yeah, to get them a different cultural feel other than Yogyakarta and show them that even though you're only one city away, the cultural vibe or cultural hotspot can be that different from Yogyakarta because Indonesia is just that diverse. Okay, next slide, please. Lastly, we have the farewell party. This is the fourth routine event that we have. It's basically the same thing as welcoming dinner, but with the opposite goal, which is not to welcome, but to say farewell and goodbye. Usually this is held right before finals week and we gather, we eat, we say goodbyes as of one last hurrah before finals week and our, and our international students have to go home to their home countries. Next slide, please. 
this is our minor program that we hold uh, uh, in UGM Buddy Club. Buddy Day basically means that you, as a local buddy, need to hang out with your international student and an international student that is not your assigned buddy. This usually means that you hold like quote unquote play dates with a friend of yours who's another local buddy and say, hey, me and my buddy want to hang out with you and your buddy. Can we go out to do something? And yeah, that is this is a routine that we hold once every two weeks that you need to do this so, so that the international students can mingle more and you can have an excuse to hang out with your buddy and whatnot. So yeah, in the middle of the slide there, you can see that that's me. Uh, that's me doing a cooking exchange with my buddy. So me and my friend Bima uh, both have German buddies and we ex sort of exchange recipes where they made us shakshuka and we made them, I think it was sayur asam as a sort of like direct recipe exchange between our two cultures. That was very interesting. So yeah, next slide, please. During COVID season, yeah. Next slide, please. So as you know, we don't really have much to do during COVID season because number one, international students don't, re we don't really have that many international students during COVID season because exchange programs are all halted, international travel is all halted, we can't even go back to Yogyakarta. So the best we can do is hold online events. This first one is for our local buddy specifically, where we have capacity building with the head of OYA UGM, Pa Imade Andi Arsana PhD where he teaches us more about uh, professional uh, ethics and professional techniques that will help us in our future. Like for example, in this one, he talks about scholarships, but he also gives talks about how to build a good CV, how to act during interviews and so on and so forth, just to give us more you know, capacity as local buddies in exchange for our job to take care of international students. Next slide, please. We also always keep an eye out for uh, international collaborations. Like for example, in this one, we have a sharing session with Wakayama University from Japan, where coincidentally, they had a member who once uh, had an exchange program to UGM. And we had a local buddy who was about to go to Wakayama University to an exchange program. So that tie that coincidence basically made it easier for us to have this collaboration event. And we're always open to more of these events uh, and collaborations. We are going to do another one with Wakayama U University sometime this month. Uh, and we're also always reaching out to different universities all over the world and all over Indonesia, such as this one with Wakayama University, so that we can always you know, extend our friendships towards these different universities. Next slide, please. And of course we have this is sort of a replacement for both welcoming dinner and our farewell, farewell parties where we have these virtual international student gatherings on Zoom where we sort of welcome our new members who are local buddies who haven't gotten a chance to meet international students offline and our international students who didn't get a chance to go to Indonesia or Yogyakarta, you know, because of COVID circumstances. And we often invite speakers, which are international students who did go to Yogyakarta, who can tell them their experiences of what it was like to give a more clearer picture towards the international students who couldn't go to Yogyakarta, or, you know, give an example of what it would, it would be like to have a buddy for the local buddies who didn't get to meet their international buddies offline or directly in UGM. Next slide, please. This last one is for our new members, our local buddies who we didn't get to meet yet since you know we have an entirely new batch of students who didn't go to campus yet because of COVID circumstances. So their entire uni university life and their studies have been online. They haven't even went to UGM yet. They haven't even met each other yet. So in order for them to, you know, be comfortable in Buddy Club and for them to want to stay in Buddy Club next semester for the sake of regeneration, we host these online game nights and bonding sessions so that they have some certain attachment to Game Buddy Club. Because one of my biggest fears as the president is that next semester, people will not be that attached to Ugyan Buddy Club because they never experienced it offline. They didn't experience the offline events, you know, 
those dinners, those cultural programs, going to Candi Borobudur, going to Solo, Semarang, Malang, and whatnot. Those are the things that made me stick around for two years. And I'm afraid that since they don't have that, they're not going to want to stick around. So I'm doing our utmost to make them want to stay in Nubia and Buddy Club. So that's it for our events. Next slide, please. This is our social media. Please feel free to follow for updates or, you know, if there are any universities here who want to do a collaboration project or a sharing session with UGM Buddy Club, please feel free to message us directly on Instagram. We're always active there. And we're more than happy to do these collaborations because, yeah, we need the events. <laughs> we're very, very, uh, we're very, we're trying very, very hard to make new events for COVID season. You know, the creat our creativity is kind of stuck right now. We're always happy to have these excuses to how hold these new events so that our members also continually feel the excitement of being in Ugi Buddy Club. So next slide, please. That's it for my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, I think the question and answer session will be after all the presentations are done. Yes. Okay. So that's all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I am Matthew Gultom, the president of Ugin Buddy Club. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Matthew, for uh, such an awesome uh, presentation. And now we have our second speaker, which is Christian Mechu Maborang from Student Body Club, Mapua University, Philippines. Please welcome Christian. All right. Uh, hello and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the following team leaders of the uh, Telkom University who, who created and organized this event. And, uh, Ms. Inda, the manager of the international office. Uh, Ms. Leah, uh, uh, the assistant manager of the international mobility. Uh, Ms. Mefti, the assistant manager for international services. And to the student body colleagues of Telkom University, the, the UGM, if, if I am not mistaken, and what is the uh, other university we have? Also from Apoa University. And uh, last but not the least, we have the, what is the other? No. Oh, I can't read the other name the university. Oh, I guess. That's okay. Um, and to everyone, to all, to all the participants, uh, good afternoon. Um, I would like to share with you about my student body talk. This is a bit quite different from the first presentation. So uh, first, before I present my, my student body experience, um, in our university, we don't have any official organization yet. Uh, we're just doing the student body volunteer program. So if anybody is interested, uh, we would just welcome them to, uh, to join. Uh, we are all under the International Career and Exchange Program of Mapua University or the Mapua ISEP. So once again, I am Christian Maborang and today this is my uh, presentation about student body talk. So can we have the next slide, please? So a little bit trivia of myself. Uh, actually, I am a student alumni of Mapua University. Now I am currently a master's student at Dongai University. But I've graduated at Mapua University since last year. So I've been a student body for almost two, two and a half years from August to December of 2020. So can you have the next slide, please? So as I have said earlier, I am a graduate student researcher and uh, studying a lot of research and whole grad, graduate stuff. So that's the first uh, part of our university campus in Busan. So can we have the next slide, please? Uh, the, the other campus is where my university is located. Uh, unfortunately, I'm still here in the Philippines because of the visa restrictions and due to the COVID pandemic situation right now. So can we have the next slide, please? All right, so how is my life as a stu student body? Uh, I would like to summarize my student body life experience in four letters based from my, my nickname. First is letter M. Uh, being a student body is really, really a memorable experience for me during my uh, 
college days in Mapua University. So all of us student bodies in Mapua are uh, very, very busy in studying engineering and all, uh, all research related stops. So while doing so, after we have our classes, research, internship or experiment, uh, we usually uh, go out with the local bodies and the international bodies of, of our partner schools to, to eat, to go travel together and uh, do a lot of good stuff, such as going to uh, local tourist spots in the, in the city of Manila where my university is located. Uh, we've been to Intramuros, we've been to National Museum, we also went to the, if I remember, remember correctly, we also went to the Ocean Park here in, here in Manila and a whole lot of more places, more good places. So aside from that, uh, being a student buddy is also amazing and totally wonderful because not only that I've done a lot of things that I've mentioned earlier, but I also gain experiences and new learnings in developing my personal skills, such as communication skills, leadership, uh, social, organizational, and also being culturally and globally aware of the things that I am learning and experiencing through the student body. I also have attended a lot of events and facilitated most of them. So um, being a student body is really, really a uh, respond, uh, kind of a, a have a lot of responsibilities, but uh, at the end of the day, everything will be worth it because you you get the chance to share your look, your hometown or your home country culture to the to your international bodies, and then they will also share their their culture as well. So with that, you will be able to gain connections, uh, gain friends, uh, new network, and and a whole lot more. And so with that, um, on the last letter of my nickname, there are too many things that I want to mention. But if I have to name some of the highlights that I have been to and all of the events that Mapua University are handled, uh, I will share it to you in the next following slides. So kindly, oh yeah. So, uh, what, one of the uh, most popular event of Mapua University is the Mapua English Camp. So all of the international students will visit us here in the Philippines to study English for 30 days, uh, not only to, to improve their language and communication skills, but also to learn and adopt Philippine culture. So after their English session, we have cultural immersion. So we we let them go to the tourist spots in the city of Manila. And we also had the chance to go to the famous uh, theme park here or the amusement park here in the Philippines. And that's Enchanted Kingdom. We also let them experience our Filipino way of eating together. We call it the kamay kamay or sometimes in English, we just call it poodle fight. So we have also done a lot of other activities as well, such as wearing our let them experience wearing national costume and do the national traditional dance of the Philippines. So can we have the next slide? So by the time I started joining the student body program last 2018, I was, had, I was given an opportunity to study in Korea at Kumo University for the student exchange program. So not only I did had the chance to study academically, but also uh, my colleagues and I have experienced uh, Korean culture, such as uh, going to Seoul, Busan, and going to a lot of tourist spots and eating uh, famous Korean foods. And we also had the chance to wear their traditional clothing. And uh, I also had the chance to represent our country to the International Migrants Day of the city where my where KIT is located. So yeah, there are a lot, a lot of things that I want to mention, but uh, I think we don't, I think that time is uh, a little bit short, but, but I would, but let's keep it going. So during that time, I also met a lot of international partner schools of Mapua from Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Denmark, and all, 
other partner universities there in Mapua as well. So can we have the next slide? So after six months of study in Korea, I went back to the Philippines to finish my studies and internship and research. So I was fortunate to be a part of the first English camp of Okayama University of Science in Okayama, Japan. Uh, that was before, before pandemic. So both in CYCU in Taiwan and Okayama, I've been to the, to the, those English camps twice. So that leads me to four times. Uh, they, they have the similar experience with the Chung Yuan Christian University of, of the, their English camp program. So yeah, so here are the things that we did. Uh, not only we, we taught them how to speak and communicate in English, they also taught us how to speak Japanese. Uh, and, and from Taiwan, they also taught us basic Taiwanese as well. So not only in the English camp, we also offer uh, in international student pro exchange programs from different schools. So two of my friends from KIT uh, went to our university to study for six months, just like what we did in Korea before. So can we have the next slide? Now for the COVID season, or I should say pandemic, uh, I was very fortunate to be a part of the passage to ASEAN 2020, green growth and eco innovation. So I see some of the familiar faces there in, in the Zoom. So it's nice to see you again. Um, that event uh, talks about the environmental issues, uh, how, to, how, to solve, how to solve waste, wage management problems, uh, sustainability, and all other things. Uh, we did also a, a project, uh, propose, proposal project during that time. And I had the great chance to collaborate with our friends from the Philippines and Indonesia. And then we share our culture respectfully. So I learned a lot of things from you guys from Indonesia. And then they learn a lot of things from us in the Philippines as well. So yeah, can we have the next slide? Before I officially closed my college life in Mapua, I was tasked by our team head to take charge in leading the English camp second leg of the Mapua and OUS in Japan. Because as what uh, Matthew said, uh, international students cannot go in, the, in their countries of choosing or partner schools that they are going because of the pandemic. So. So with that, we did our best to do it online and it, it was really fun. And we had the chance to spend time together for two weeks during the online English camp. And uh, everything is nice. Uh, we, are, we are pretty much confident to speak and to be able to improve our personal and social skills to our international bodies and local bodies as well. So can we have the next slide? From all, the, all of those things that I have mentioned in my student body life, I want to give you a, a, a great heads up for, or an advice. Can we have the next slide, please? First, um, being a student body is really, really fun. Although it's really, uh, really, really hard to do a lot of things because Every day you're gonna organize events, uh, uh, inviting participants and looking for speakers and everything. But we need to enjoy our life while doing responsibilities because in the next slide, uh, next slide please. Because if we do enjoy our life as a student body while handling a lot of responsibilities, we grow not only as a person, not only individually, but also in a group. Uh, you, you will gonna improve a lot of things in the personal aspect, in the career aspect, and even in the other aspects in life. Especially if after college, if you wanna go to graduate school or work or anything that you want to do in life, being a student body will give you the edge because you have the chance to, because I mean, you have a, a great opportunity to to be working with all other people, not only locally, but also internationally as well. And with that, the next slide, please. But most importantly, have fun. 
being a student body is uh, for me is one of the best highlights in my uh, university career. I had a lot of fun communicating with local and international uh, students, and I had a great opportunity to be a part of those programs. And, and because, of, because this generation, we are now more globally and culturally aware from the, from the things that we are learning. So with that, um, I hope that I give you the heads up and the uh, sharings that I, I mentioned earlier. And so with that, next slide, please. For, for more uh, details or questions about the university or Mapua University international programs, you may visit their Facebook page in the Mapua ISEP. Or you can also message me via this social media account so that I can give you more detailed uh, information. And if you want to do collaborations with us, uh, please uh, don't hesitate and feel free to communicate with us. And we will be happy and ha happily, uh, happily message you and communicate with you so that we can work together and create new, new great connections. And so with that, on the last slide, thank you very much for uh, listening, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Maraming po salamat. Teddy Makasi. All right. Thank you so much, um, Christian, for giving us such an inspirational advices and a good uh, presentation. Now we are going to uh, have our third speaker. <laughs> which is Wisnu Duyon from Sahabat Dia Students Body Club, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Please welcome Wisnu. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Hilda. First of all, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone, and my friends here, as well as uh, participants who attended the ICT event. Uh, I would like to thank you first. It's an honor to be able to join in here. Uh, say hello from me to Miss Inda and then Miss Leah, Miss Mephi, and all the staff from uh, Telkom University, also all the participants who attend this event. So uh, yeah, first of all, um, I'm Wisnu, and but just call me Nunu because I think it's easier, just only Nunu. And I'm from the Education University or Universitas Bedikan Indonesia. I'm the communication students who joined uh, the Body Club in UP since um, 2019. Yeah, uh, it takes two years uh, uh, until now because uh, it's a pandemic. So uh, in the last year, we didn't open recruitment. So I took two years to be a student body in UP. Well, uh, allow me to present uh, my slide. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay. Okay. Can everybody uh, see my, my slides, right? Well, this is, hang on. Okay, uh, wait a minute. I have a technical problem, hang on, sorry. Okay, sorry, uh, everyone, since I have uh, my technical problem, uh, my laptop, like, you know, they have no response. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe, yeah, sorry. This is sorry for me. This is uh, my mistake. I cannot. Okay, maybe. Uh, before, 
waiting for my presentation, I will uh, explain about uh, the student body at UP. Well, uh, uh, actually, in the uh, in every batch, uh, we open recruiting uh, student body in UP. Also, in a year, we usually uh, do open recruitment uh, for start, uh, student body called Sahabat Dia. Uh, why? In UP, we call Sahabat Dia because uh, maybe this uh, DIS staffs or Directorate of International Office uh, want to ask to be a friend or uh, in Indonesia, it's called Sahabat. Uh, so uh, all international, international students can share anything, can complain anything, and then uh, can do anything like uh, Sahabat, you know, in Indonesia. All right. Um, and then also in every batch, um, we have uh, only like 20 or 25 um, okay i guess we still have some uh device difficulties maybe we can wait a little bit longer All right, what about we are moving on to our fourth speaker and uh, after our fourth speaker done, there's a presentation, we can continue with Vishnu. Okay, I'm inviting Aisha Suchi Utomo from Takam University. She is the captain of International Office Student Body Club. Please welcome Aisha. Thank you, Hilda. Uh, wait a second, let me share my screen. All right, can you see my screen? Hopefully you can. Uh, so firstly, uh, like, let me introduce myself. My name is Aisa Suchi Utomo. I am currently the captain of the International Office Student Body Club. So in this presentation, I would like to tell you guys a little bit about the International Office Student Body Club what is International Student Body Club and the things that we do, and as well as a little bit about the history itself. So what is ISBC? The International Office Student Body Club, or ISBC in short, was established under direct supervision of the International Office of Telkom University in 2014. In ISBC, we aim to provide the best memorable experience to the international students who are continuing their studies here in Telkom University in terms of student services and social media contents. So here's a little bit about the history of ISPC. With Telkom University being reported to be the best private university in all across Indonesia, Telkom University has a goal to be a world-class university. As many um, international students here in Telkom uh, once started to put an interest on pursuing their education here in Telkom, the international office had difficulties on managing many enrolled international students. That is when ISBC was first established in 2014 and is able to, cons to assist in the international office by creating events, social media contents, as well as managing the international students. So next slide, we have the divisions. We have two divisions, in fact, in IOSBC. There are hospitality divisions, art, media, and publication. And you might be wondering, what exactly do we do in this each division? So without further ado, in the hospitality division, we aim to provide the warmest welcome to the international students and give the best hospitality service that we can. We are also responsible for each international students during their studies in Telkom, as well as arranging various meetings and events. And secondly, in art, media, and publication, or in short, AMP, we work to create contents for both the international office as well as ISBC itself. It's divided in three teams, which are design team, copywriting team, and the video team. We upload our content in various platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, and the international office websites as well. So ah, here's the ISBC events. Um, 
this is some of the event, many some of the events of the many events that we created, which we will be discussing in the next slides. Here is the welcoming party. It's probably one of my personal favorites events in ISBC. Um, in welcoming party, we invite all international students who are enrolled in that year to play many fun and traditional games of Indonesia. We also chat there and getting to know each other as well as exchanging gifts. We try to give the most utmost welcome and make them feel comfortable in this new environment uh, that they are trying to adapt in Indonesia and uh, specifically in Tokyo University. Next up, we have the International Culture Summer Camp. It's an, it's an event organized by Telkom University International Office in collaboration with IOSBC. In this event, um, we gather many universities, um, international students from many universities to come along and have this event where they create their traditional local foods and present them to all the staffs in Telkom University and as well as the students in Telkom University. And this is the International Students Outbound. I think, in my opinion, this event is one of the most favorites of the buddies in IOSBC. It's an annual program that who is organized by the International Office to make all of our international students and buddy feel refreshed again before welcoming their new semester. Throughout these events, the buddies and the international students and staff get to know more about each other, chat, and do some outdoor and fun activities. And then we have assisting and shifts. IUSBC uh, also participates in assisting international students during their studies here, um, following along their during their classes or their trips. We also have shifts in the international office where we are available to help the international office whenever they are in need, as well, uh, as, well as work alongside each other uh, with other buddies in uh, the international office called Buddy Corner. So lastly, um, due to the pandemic, it's very unfortunate that we cannot hold most of our events and activities. That's why um, we try to create this event virtually. And one of them is called Buddy, Share, Buddy Sharing Session. So uh, Buddy Sharing Session is an event collaboration made by IUSPC where we invite universities from uh, across of Indonesia. And then we, sh we in this event, we try to get to know them and connect with them more, as well as discuss our experience on being part of Buddy Club and sharing fun stories and the benefits we gain for, by working under the international office itself. So maybe if one of you guys are interested on coming along with us during our buddy sharing session, feel free to hit us up because we are more than happy to welcome you guys on this event. So yeah, that's a little simple about IOSBC. I hope that you guys could get a little grasp on what we do and what we are. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm gonna give it back to the MC. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much Aisha. While we are waiting for uh, Wisnu to come back because you still have the device difficulties. What about we are having a little chit chat with um, this amazing uh, people here. We have Christian, we have Matthew and we have Aisha. I would like to ask uh, maybe um, several questions or maybe just one question. Uh, I am so um, curious how you guys building a network with international student. Like, uh, do you still in touch with uh, the student that has been come back to their uh, country or like how, how you build the relationship, the friendship? <laughs> Maybe we can start from uh, Matthew. Um, I keep in touch with them as I would any other friend, I guess. Uh, we still follow each other's Instagram. Sometimes we reply to each other's stories. We comment on each other's posts. And sometimes if I have a an event 
for UGM Buddy Club and we need like a testimony video, I hit them up. I asked them, hey, can you record a two to three minute video about your experiences in, in UGM? And, you know, sometimes they want to, sometimes they're busy, but it's an excuse for us to keep in touch also. But other than that, it's all as you would any normal friendship commenting on each other's social media. All right. That's so great. And what about Christian? But thank you for that uh, very uh, reminiscing question, Miss Hilda. And once again, I'd like to formally recognize uh, our partner schools, Mapua Telcom, uh, UVM, and UP. Uh, to answer your question, Miss Hilda, um, I, my, I myself personally feel a little bit more nostalgic if I am having a chance to communicate with a lot of, of my great friends. Uh, it, right now, uh, I see some familiar faces right there, such as Didi and Rashad. Uh, it's nice to see you too. And Miss Inda, it's so nice to see you again after one year. Uh, for me, uh, being, being family-oriented is what I am. I am, uh, what, do you, what do you call this? Being family oriented is one of my very important principles in life. So, so with that, I always make sure to keep in touch with all of my friends internationally, even if uh, there are times that they are pretty much busy and we are pretty much busy. But um, we, I, I always make sure that uh, everything will, I, I mean, I will always make sure that uh, they will be do just fine and like having a great, uh, ask them if they are free on that day to have a little bit of catch up with all of our friends. And then to the, to the local bodies of our university, we even have a chance to meet uh, personally, to, to just eat and talk and have a little bit of coffee and like that. Um, to, to, to have this kind of feeling makes me really happy because um, it's, uh, how can I say it? Uh, to be quite more honest, it's really hard to express what I'm feeling if uh, I have a chance to talk with them. Aside from being happy, uh, we all cry when we have our video chats because it's because it's been a pr pretty much long time indeed to to ask how are they doing and what are you up we're up to now and things like that. But but nonetheless, um, if if we always uh, keep in touch with them consistently at any time, uh, I am pretty sure that the, the partner schools of the host university and the partner university will have a stronger and greater network of connection, especially when collaborating with a lot of different projects, uh, upcoming programs, online and offline. But we all wish that when this pandemic is over, uh, we could have the chance to collaborate personally. So we can go to your country and then you can go to our country and then we'll have like uh, a big event for the international program, things like that. So that we can be able to create more friendship, uh, be more, as I mentioned earlier, be more globally aware and culturally aware. And at the same time to build a stronger network not only in our schools, but also our partner schools locally and globally. So I guess that's how will I answer my question. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Christian. And maybe lastly, from Aisha. Uh, yeah, I guess that with having friends abroad, so many of them abroad, I think social media really helped on for us to maintain these kinds of friendships, right? So. Yeah, being in touch with them, social media, following each other on Instagram, as well as sometimes replying their stories and maybe saying happy birthday to them. It's one way to maintain their friendship. And mostly because some of the in international students here in Telcom University, they had such a great time while they're studying here in Telcom University, and they constantly post about their studies during here in Bandung. So 
sometimes when they post about that and then we look back to those posts and we remember, oh, I remember when you did this. I remember when you did that. So, and then there's like this sort of discussion and then it's great that they had a great time here in Bandung in Tokyo University and that we can still keep in touch with them and them having a great time as well. So, yeah. Okay, thank you so much uh, for Matthew, Christian, and Aisha. And because we knew already came back here, maybe we can invite him to continue his presentation and introduction about Sahabat Dia from hey. Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. So welcome back, Miss Nil. All right, thank you, Miss Ova. Uh, actually, that's my apologize. So I'm uh, so sorry because due to technical error. Uh, okay, thank you for uh, help me out uh, my presentation. Okay, actually, yeah, uh, I'm Wisnu and I'm from UPI. I'm the communication students and joined the Buddy Club, or in UPI we call it Sahabat Dia, yeah, not Sahabat Saya, not Sahabat Kamu. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's all um, uh, about me. And I joined the Student Body Club since 2019. Actually, it's two years uh, until I retired in this year because um, due to the pandemic uh, condition. So uh, last year, Sahabadia didn't open a recruitment. Yep. Okay, next. Well, uh, actually, if we uh, see the history, Sahabadia. Uh, Before becoming a Sahabat Dia, uh, the name is Sahabat Oyer, Office International and Education Relation. But uh, now uh, we have the name, uh, the new name for that. It's called Sahabat Dia. And Sahabat, yeah, maybe it's a little bit different with another uh, student body club. Sahabat Dia, uh, this is student body under the Uh, DIA of Directorate of International Affairs in UP. So uh, maybe it's the question why it uh, could be Sahabat uh, that give a name to us. Yeah, actually maybe uh, my assumption is uh, DIA uh, hope that we can become a Sahabat or in English is best friend for foreign students in UP. Yes, uh, because uh, as I know, if we have sahabat or best friend, uh, we can uh, close uh, uh, as uh, sahabat as friend. We can tell uh, stories. We can complain something. We can uh, not only just uh, hang out or just uh, study in UP, but we can also play and do many things together uh, with people uh, and sahabat. Yeah, so uh, actually, maybe, yeah, Mas Metu has a uh, lot uh, explaining about the student body in another university too, also in UP, we, we also uh, access to accompany international students uh, at UP, so they feel like they have uh, sahabat, they have best friends, uh, and especially they have a new family. Okay, next. Well, um, this is, uh, if you are asked to me what uh, Sahabat, Dia's, uh, Sahabat Dia do in UPI. So actually, uh, in general, it's the uh, same. It's a similar. We always provide uh, the first thing, uh, cultural experience or cultural immersion. Yeah, we provide cultural experience with the international students. Usually the first time they come to Indonesia, we will take uh, to the place uh, to get the food, which is very fit for students around UPI, starting from the food in the cafe maybe, or uh, just on the street, like pochelele and then uh, lotek and so many things put uh, around the UPI that fit for students. Yeah, the goal for uh, the goal for the cultural experience is uh, that they can experience being Indonesian students, especially on the uh, campus UPI. Yeah, all right. And then also uh, we provide experience to ride the public transportation since in Bandung is very access angkot. Yeah, everybody know maybe. Uh, 
uh, my friends from Telkom also know Angkor. Yeah, so we provide experience to write uh, Angkor. And then see maybe the Pengamen or buskers and all kinds of the condition around the UP campus. So uh, they can begin to adapt to what is uh, happening around them, especially in UP. And sometimes also uh, they have questions uh, like, uh, why do always uh, we have to smile as uh, Indonesian people and maybe they are asking also how to buy the things uh, and also how important to shake hands in Indonesia and that's our job, that's our uh, duty to explain them uh, while we walk around with them. Yes, actually, Sabat uh, Dia uh, usually provide this experience by hang out or lunch with uh, foreign students uh, when they first arrive in Indonesia. And the second is about a knowledge transfer. Yeah, so when we provide uh, cultural experience directly, also we uh, provide uh, knowledge transfer. Uh, and this knowledge transfer, uh, it's Mm, we provide a lot of insight how Indonesia is through this knowledge transfer. Yeah, about the education system and then about the history and how to survive as a students in Bandung, especially in UPI, and another insight. Yeah, in the fact, several programs also collaborate between Sahabatia and international students. So it will give more uh, knowledge, more insight to them, something like that. And for me personally, this uh, exchange of information is important, uh, my friends, for us to enrich our, our knowledge, especially to those who are coming to Indonesia for the first time, like uh, international students. And also the important things that uh, we did, uh, we Sahabat do in UPI, it's about networking and relation. Sahabat dia relation with the international students which usually extends beyond the programs that we undertake. Beyond that, we also have the time to hang out or maybe invite them or introduce them to our personal activities. Uh, some international students even invited to join the co-curriculum or extracurricular or extracurricular or maybe uh, it's known as student activity unit in UP. Yeah, they are uh there were others who together with Sabat met like a sport program with them and then introduced them bring them to our circle friends uh we, we can interact each other so the network is bigger so they have a lot of friends here not only Sahabat Dia but also uh, another friends yeah I think this kind um uh that Sahabat Dia did to them that way that circle friends can be wider. And uh, the fourth is uh, by, uh, what we do as a sahabadia is how to make their comfort while living in Indonesia. Yeah, this is, I think, very important. And all the student body, I think, do something like this also. Yeah, make them feel comfortable living in their place, especially in sahabadia in Bandung or in UPI. Because uh, we know they live in Bandung not only for a month or two months, but even maybe six months, six months, a year, or even two years. This is uh, what we think is very important, how to make them comfortable living here. And by through various programs, we try to make them happy and comfort living in Indonesia, especially in Bandung. So they feel like they have many friends. They also have a new family here. Um, yeah, that's what we do as a sahabat dia. Okay, next. Okay, and uh, furthermore, what is the special or can be obtained from being a sahabat dia? Actually, maybe uh, it's similar uh, as uh, Mas Matthew uh, explained, because uh, from the experience, we, we can get a lot from this, uh, from Student Body Club, yeah? Uh, so actually, uh, we also get cultural experience uh, with them and then gain new insight also. There is um, networking also and a lot of things. But what makes difference, maybe it's uh, that as a sahabat dia, we also know how 
the experience to organize with the very cross-cultural people. Yeah, uh, it makes us also have to know what their cultural conditions are likely. And in addition, um, another benefit that we can get from Student Body Club or Sahabat Dia is the information regarding various program that we can participate such as a summer camp maybe in another university uh, abroad and then exchange uh, students and many more. The, I think this is the specialty of uh, being a Sahabat Dia in UPI and also maybe being a student body club in your university. Okay, next. Well, um, can, can you next please? All right. Okay, so actually, uh, how to be a student body in UPI or Sabat uh, DIA or Sabat DIA? Uh, we have uh, open recruitment, body recruitment. Uh, the process is uh, also similar, maybe uh, to another student body. Uh, the recruitment first, we uh, should collect our data administration files and then. Uh, they have also written tests regarding UP, uh, UP knowledge and then West Java cultural knowledge, also the international knowledge. And there was interview process also as well until it, uh, until it was finally announced who passed to become a member of Sahabat uh, DIA or Sahabat DIA. And after announcement, usually we have a meet and greet with another bodies, with the members. Uh, in this session, actually, we will get a kind of a brief or material on a cross-cultural communication and then about the interesting stories from the previous uh, Sahabat DIA and many more. And also, after uh, meet and greet, the members of DIA or Sahabat uh, DIA will be given a programs yeah we are given the freedom to create or modify existing programs of course uh with the limitations that set by uh, dia staff uh, we carry out many programs starting from the internal uh, sahabat program like the fellowship night uh, to make us uh, bond uh, and then also uh, programs with the international students such as summer programs and then fun hiking, traditional games, international culinary, culinary nights, and another program. Well, but unfortunately, right now, uh, the program, it should be conducted uh, by virtually, yeah, uh, considering that the pandemic issues isn't over yet. But uh, as a result, uh, there are several existing programs such as uh, virtual summer program in UPI and then also international body summit program, which one of uh, student body from Telkom University, uh, MUPI also joined the program uh, in last year, if I didn't mistaken. And finally, before uh, we have new member of Sabah DIA, there will usually uh, be a variable party. And before the pandemic, we conduct the variable party at the place, maybe a uh, yeah, hotel or in a campus. And usually there are various kinds of awarding uh, session, inviting international students to join as well. But actually the variable party uh, should be conducted by virtually also, yeah. And now, after this, I will uh, show you, I'm going to show you the documentation of our activity as a Sahabat DIA in UP. So can you next the slide, please? Next, please. Okay. All right, can you just next, next? Okay. Okay, next, next. All right, well, uh, this is one of the program that I think this is very, uh, this is will be my favorite. Yeah, this is the summer program activity. The activity was short, but this engagement was most memorable for me in UP. We stayed together for a week and uh, we are given several missions by the DIS staff. It's like maybe mission X or 
uh, what else? Yeah, maybe like mission apps. Uh, our activity is like uh, teaching uh, students uh, in Lembang, like in the picture. And then also we sharing food and do social charity to homeless in Bandung. And then also learning how to play Anklung, so on. Yeah, um, I think this is uh, the best uh, and my favorite program uh, as long as I am the member of the Sahabat DIA. Okay, next. Next. Ah, this is another program uh, that we conduct also in UPI. Uh, another is fun hiking to Dago Pakar. Yeah? Uh, I think it's quite impressive also. Uh, we went together with the bus to Dago Pakar. It's like the jungle, maybe yeah? a city, ja city jungle, uh, or maybe small mountain. <laughs> I don't know. Then we hiked together with uh, Sahabat DIA, international students, and also uh, DIA staff. And we set also the post to post to play the games with them. And uh, everyone who joined this activity will be divided into the teams. And on hiking a trip, they must stop at each post and perform uh, a task or mission or playing just games. Uh, commonly, we use the games uh, like what we do in Indonesia, starting like guessing words uh, using Indonesian uh, word, and then then sing balloons and another activities. And last but not least, next. This is one more thing. Uh, next also. Okay, next again. Uh, next. Okay. Uh, this is the program that we conduct by virtual, yeah, because uh, due to the pandemic issues. This program is simply asking Indonesian uh, people, Indonesians or Indonesia people, to cook dishes from students from various countries. Yeah, they are provided the food uh, ingredients by international students and cook according to the menu that uh, of the country they choose. So um, this is the documentation. Uh, in the left, there are uh, one of students from Uzbekistan that explain about uh, their traditional food and then ask Indonesians or Indonesian people to make the cook by uh, her recipe. Yeah, and then we must check the documentation, video or photo, and then uh, during the pandemic, we make it by Zoom. Yeah, so we we are doing this uh, event virtually. Okay, I think uh, that's all the sharing about the Sahabat DIA at UP. So if you have the patients or something to share, just uh, do not hesitate to contact me, ask me, and thank you. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you so much, Wisnu, for such a great uh, presentation about Sahabat Dia. It is very interesting uh, sharing for us uh, and for, uh, for all of the audience here. And now we will have an open discussion. You may ask the question uh, directly to the speaker using thumbs up or drop your question on the chat box. Please ask anything that uh, you want to know from these amazing speakers here. All right, we have um, first, I think it's Rashad. Hi, everyone. I was so shocked because I got highlighted. <laughs> so, um, hi, everyone. Hi, all the leaders. That was a very good presentation. It's very nice to see you guys for the first time. And hello, Matthew. <laughs> Long time to see you. Um, so, thank you for all the presentation. It was very great. Um, I want to ask for all the leaders, these four leaders of International Office Student Body Club, um, I want to ask about just one question. Um, how do you deal uh, about any work errors or internal conflicts between the 
student body and the international students. I really want to know because each person uh, must be have different perspective. So that's my questions. Thank you for answering me. Okay, do, do we want to move to the second uh, question first or uh, do you guys want to answer the question first? Um, is this free to answer? Yeah, okay. okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for that question, Rashid. This is actually something that I've been thinking a lot about since the days before I was elected president because we've had this problem every semester. But I think... Uh, during my presidency, the most effective method to combat this is just having a zero tolerance policy towards anyone who disregards their responsibilities by doing two things. Number one, if you need something done and the person who is supposed to do it is not doing it, then either I just do it directly or I ask someone else to do it. Number two, yeah, okay, so that is for the sake of the event or for the sake of the job so that nothing gets errored or there's no like further difficulties towards the event and whatnot, right? Because most of these things are time sensitive. Number two, after that thing is done, you ask for the, I ask for direct responsibility for the person who is supposed to do it. Did they have a good reason for that or are they just being lazy? You can, you can tell usually when they're just being lazy and finding excuses. When that happens, I do this, uh, uh, this process that I learned from another organization, which is my debate club in UGM, which is they have a public, like public court system where you meet with everyone else, all of the other steering committees, you know, the head of the division, some members to like actually listen to what they have to say. And then you as the person who did the job for them or the person who are overseeing them, you give them your perspective. Were they being negligent? Did they have an actual good reason? And then everyone present at that court can get to vote whether or not they get to keep the job or we should just replace them entirely so that this kind of thing doesn't happen in the future. So yeah, number one, just do the job for them. Don't wait around because that's just going to add more time pressure to the thing you're supposed to do. And number two, directly ask for responsibility. If they are exhibiting this kind of behavior like time and time again, just replace them. It's going to be easier that way. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. That was very great. It was very strict. Okay, maybe Wisnu, Christian, or Aisha want to answer? All right, maybe I will uh, share uh, how to manage the conflict yeah, in uh, internal team uh, in Sahabat DIA. Actually, uh, maybe it's a little bit different with uh, the culture in UGM, uh, Mas Matthew. So uh, in UPI, uh, actually we don't have any leaders. So everyone has their own role on uh, Sahabat DIA. And what we do is support each other. So uh, for example, uh, as a project uh, or as a program leader, I, uh, I have a lot of responsibility and maybe in the day of the event, I cannot do many things. Uh, my team, uh, another Sahabat DIA, will support uh, me but actually the one who import uh, the one that really important is communication so make sure that i always communicate what i can do and uh, what i cannot do uh, in that event so uh, the communication and then also respect uh, i know this uh, this uh, student body club uh, we have a uh, we should commit to the uh, club, to the program also. But actually, uh, the highlight is this is uh, voluntary. So uh, we, 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 we know that the set of the mind that this is voluntary. So if you cannot do, just uh, tell uh, another buddy or tell another sahabat to support you each other. And 
uh, if the bad something happens, uh, may, uh, for example, there is no one sahabat that can uh, do the event, maybe the staff uh, from the IA will also uh, ask for help to review patch, something like that. So yeah, uh, I think that's uh, really uh, that, that's different culture between uh, universities uh, body club, but that's really good because uh, I think in UGM, uh, you you gain uh, something you, you gain and learn uh, something about responsibility and i think it's good also yeah thank you all right anybody else yeah uh, i think communication plays a really important role whenever you're holding a responsibility in any kind of organization right so and of course, sometimes miscommunication could happen. That could be either um, the individual's fault for not following the procedure or understanding the concept that they're given, or the leader that's not, um, how do I say it? It's not giving the information broadly for every of the other members to understand. So um, yeah, communication plays a really, really important role. and. But sometimes like casualties could happen unexpectedly, even before a um, few days before the event started or something like that. And so it's very important to have a plan B, even though how unexpectedly it is, it's important for a leader to remain calm and come up with a solution like a plan B or something. I think that, that I hopefully that could answer your question. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. <laughs> oh, I thought it, it was my connection. I think Christian is muted. Or is that something happened with the devices? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I did I did not uh, switch on my mic right now. <laughs> All right, so to answer your question, Mr. Rashad, uh, I do agree with uh, Mr. Wisnu, uh, Mr. Matthew, and Ms. Aisha that we need to have a constant communication. So not only with that, um, we need to show camaraderie and professionalism. Camaraderie in a way that um, uh, we need to be more respectful to everybody. Uh, we, we treat them as our like colleagues or in the work. If there will be a, a, some kind of a big events, small events like that, uh, in case of their, in case of a miscommunication and misunderstanding, it is also best to have a internal meeting with the team leader and the members and the person or the persons involved with, in this uh, incident or uh, emergency, and then uh, we need to accept uh, feedbacks, criticism, or any comments that. Um, the members of the team will say because um, it will also help that person or us to improve ourselves in performing our uh, duties and responsibilities as an international student body, especially that um, we are representing our university to the partner universities to show integrity, professionalism, and a little bit more etiquette so that uh, the connection and uh, bond that we have with those uh, universities as well as the uh, internal uh, team or like the local bodies uh, will be more stronger and more more better and also uh, we need to take notes every time we have this kind of uh, meeting especially if there's an incident or accident like that, so that we can uh, directly uh, discuss what are the things that we need to uh, to focus on, so that we can uh, solve this kind of 
kind of problems without uh, affecting and offending uh, one one or more people's uh, feelings if they are in account accountable or or at fault because um, it's like we're we're having it's like we're having in a company so when we work when we work properly there are some cases that we do a lot of some some mistakes uh, I think it's also best to accept that mistake and uh, reflect on it and follow the advices or instructions need as needed so that the next time we perform our work as a student body uh, we will be more uh, professional and uh, uh, more more ethic some things like that so did that answer your question mr rashad yes it did. thank you so much my peer you're very much welcome Okay, thank you so much, uh, Rashad, for the question. And uh, thank you so much, Wisnu, Christian, Aisha, and uh, Matthew for answering the question. Now, maybe we have the last question from Dia. Didi? You, well, you can uh, ask your question. Can you all hear me? Um, so thank you for giving me a chance to ask my question and thank you for the presentation. It was really good and educating. And also hello Matt and Aisha, it's nice to see you here. And for the question I want to ask everyone is how does the pandemic affect your, affect your body clock activities and do you have any solution to resolve it? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, who wants to answer this first? Uh, I guess I guess I could try and answer it first. Um, I guess firstly, transitioning um, from offline to online was hard as it is, and means trying to maintain a closeness with all of your members uh, during the pandemic. It's quite. It's quite a hard task, especially for new members um, that just joined the organization. Like you, as new members, they couldn't feel um, the organization flow when we're offline. Like you couldn't um, come to shifts in the international office, and you couldn't um, have an a what's it called? A kesempatan untuk assisting assisting the international students and meeting them in person and communicating with them. So it's hard to get the experience as a whole. So to answer your question, how does, what's the solution for this is that probably um, creating as many internet, um, virtual, virtual events online could help as well as like building their team skills together, finding their chemistry and getting to know each, each members through that. And as well as bonding night. In ISBC, we're currently developing a bonding night it could um, be monthly or two weeks once, it's something that we're currently developing and we want to implement that as soon as we can so that we can have this connection with these buddies and have this mutual interest on pursuing international office student body club more wholly. So yeah, I think that's, that's my answer for you. Maybe. All right, maybe um, Wisnu want to answer? All right, so to the pandemic uh, condition, I think um, the moment is, uh, maybe this is the moment to transform to the online, yeah, to the digital, everything. Uh, when uh, the pandemic, uh, when there is no pandemic, we can do offline event, right? We can uh, meet with our team. We can do uh, the program uh, offline. We can bond each other. But uh, unfortunately, due the pandemic, to the pandemic, we cannot do something like that again. But uh, the good thing, 
I think is uh, now we can see like uh, we can easily to invite uh, our friends from another country like uh, Christian, right? Uh, maybe in the offline situation, it's hard because we, we should pay for the flight to, to Indonesia, to Telkom, to UGM and yeah, something like that. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> for Sahabat uh, Dia, at the first, uh, we still uh, looking for the pattern how to conduct the event uh, by online, by virtually. After maybe six months, uh, we uh, see we we found how uh, the pattern how to conduct the event uh, virtually. So that's why uh, we also have uh, another event that we conduct virtually like the summer program we uh, conduct it virtually and then the culinary night uh, virtually and i think that's uh, the good thing to improve our creativity during this pandemic yeah that's all all right uh, i would like to hear the answer from uh, Matthew first maybe which Matthew? <laughs> oh, Matthew. Meet you from uh, UGM. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, first of all, yeah, I like this question because this was something I, the, something that I was thinking very heavily about because I was elected president as COVID was hit. So technically I've never been an offline president before. So that was a huge burden on my part to think of a way to still make UGM Buddy Club an exciting club. So the first problem that I think we directly have is there are no more international students. So we don't really have anything to do. Yeah, like I said before during my presentation. So mostly our events are centered around our local buddies. What can we give to make them stick around? That was what was on my mind because if they got into UGM Buddy Club, during the pandemic and they see that oh it's not really exciting they're not going to want to stick around by the time COVID ends we're not going to have any more members that's my biggest fear so one of the first challenges is making ways for it to still be exciting the ways we did this was yeah during my presentation I gave some examples of the events we did like the capacity building the international student gathering like uh, the talks with Wakayama University and whatnot. But other than that, we found another problem inside those events, which was ultimately those events became boring. Because for online events, the rundown doesn't really change, you know, because it starts with uh, words of welcoming from the president, from the head, and then the MC talks a little bit about the event. And then we have the speaker who explains things. And then we have the question and answer session. And then there's like an ice breaking game. Maybe it's a Kahoot, maybe it's Gartik EO. And lastly, we have a photo session. And that's always the pattern for every single event, right? So the next thing we wanted to do was finding ways to make these online events even more exciting so that it doesn't feel like it's an obligation for you to come to these things, but you still feel like I'm glad I came to this event and it's not just the exact same as all the other events. Some of the ways we did this was, first of all, uh, we implemented a double MC system because one of the biggest challenges is if there's only a single MC in our events in Ugyan Buddy Club, there's not going to be much reaction different from an offline crowd would, you know? Usually you would see the crowd laughing when you tell a joke on stage. You can hear the clapping when you introduce a guest, but you can't have that on an online event. So having two MCs, they can react to each other. So it still feels like there's a reaction to the things that is being said by the MC. Secondly, we have like an open breakout room session for our events, like close to the end of the event where we just assign all our guests into random groups each group has its own facilitator, like usually around seven to 10 people in each breakout room, and they have discussions that are led by the facilitator. This gives the people who come to the event a feeling of actually participating and actually talking to other people in the event. So the socialization factor 
of coming to an event is still present in the things that we do. Yeah. Other than that, we also kind of mix up the uh, topic of the discussions we have. Like we have professional talks like with uh, the head of OYA UGM, but at the same time, we have direct cultural exchanges with Wakayama University. So it gives a different feeling of what's actually being discussed, you know. In one meeting, we're talking about how to build a good CV. In another one, we talk about what it's like to have a, an, a buddy club in Japan, for example. So that perspective is not only, oh, what is it like for you to welcome students in Indonesia? During our talks with Wakayama University, we actually had the opposite uh, point of view, which was what it was like to have Indonesian students being welcomed into Japan. And what was it like for the person from Indonesia to come to Japan? What was the challenges? Like, usually we always hear, oh, what is it? What's so hard? What is the culture shock you have when you arrive in, in Indonesia? Now we get the opposite. What is the culture shock of an Indonesian who comes to Japan as an exchange student? As a J Japanese local buddy, uh, what is the most common complaint that international students give you when they arrive to Japan, for example? So yeah, that's the kind of thing that we try to implement during our COVID season. All right, such an insightful answer. Uh, now, lastly, maybe you want to hear from Christian. Wow, I think uh, Mr. Matthew uh, mentioned everything. Um, but to answer your question, Miss Didi, wow, I, I I feel I feel pressure right now <laughs> to answer to answer this question. But uh, as a student body before, I think it, the best possible option is to um, communicate with all of your partner universities, not only in Indonesia, in Japan, but also but also everything because. Uh, for me, if you want to to implement this event more in, more interesting, uh, I think it's best possible to in, to contact with your um, international uh, partner schools like in Japan, Korea, in Taiwan, and but first things first, you need to make a, a like something like a program proposal. What, what is your target uh, audience? Say, for example, um, I want to do a, uh, uh, a, a mini show in sh uh, talent show in that, uh, that my audience or my target audience or participants will be from uh, you, you guys in Indonesia, in UP, uh, in Telkom, in UGM, and also in some, some of my friends in Universitas Islam Indonesia, in UII. Uh, my friends from, from KIT, from Korea, in Japan, CYCU, and in Denmark, and everything. I'd like to to push through uh, push through in gathering this event. Uh, I mean, to push through in doing this kind of event as many participants as I can. And then after that, um, I know it's kind of. I don't know, kind, kind of normal to do the welcome, opening ceremony, welcoming remarks, a speaker, and then run through with question and answers. Uh, I think Mr. Matthew uh, said earlier was correct. Uh, we need to find a little bit more interesting, something like, uh, like out of the box thing, even if uh, we're in online. I, I know it's really, really tough to, uh, to do these things online. Uh, Especially when I when I talk to our friends in Didi and Rasha, uh, they're all complaining at me that uh, why why are some of the events are um, I guess pretty much uh, a, a little bit of not exciting I guess but um, how can I explain it honestly. Honestly and personally, for me, it's really hard to to find a solution for now because of the pandemic and the uh, uh, the halt of accessing the visa from the international students from from all from all the countries all over the world. Uh, but to mitigate this uh, 
uh, this problem, I think the best possible solution for now is to uh, write or make a proposal, at least like five or to 10 great events that, that you have in mind, write, write them and then uh, talk to your local bodies first. And if they find it interesting, find a target audience. It can be from Indonesia, from Singapore, from Taiwan, uh, Japan, Philippines, Korea, and every all other countries that we are affiliated in. And then we can talk to our respective team heads if they are, uh, if they will gonna approve this event. And if so, then uh, we can gather a lot of uh, participants. And then uh, as what Matt, Mr. Matthew said, uh, maybe we can have a at least five MC so that we can, it can be a little bit more interesting. And, and maybe some formal events will be do, do it formally or informally, but as much as possible, we need to maintain the interaction from the MCs and then the participants because um, I know the, the feeling of welcoming is a little bit challenging and, and pro problematic to all of us, especially uh, in our case, um, we are still having problems in gathering participants. So maybe maybe the thing I have said earlier would be the best possible option is to, to make a lot of great events, uh, brainstorming ideas, and then talk to your local local bodies and in your local team heads. And then if they were gonna prove that, then make a official or formal meeting with partner schools. And then if they were gonna prove that, then I'm pretty sure it will be more interesting and it will be more exciting, especially if the time of the event you're gonna do is the time the 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 countries all over the world will somehow uh, relax their re restrictions, like allowing some of the people to go in to their countries and uh, they will go in and go out, things like that. So I hope uh, I answered your question, even though I didn't explain properly. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for all of the, uh, the speakers. Uh, it is a very nice answer and it gives us a lot of uh, insights and um, what is it, advices. And now we will have another door prize. Uh, we already choose the best question and the winner goes to Da, 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 da. <laughs> Rashad, congratulations Rashad for uh, winning the best question because your question is just very uh, great and insightful. So you will get 100,000 rupiah in form of Ling Aja or Ofo or GoPay. Congratulations. Yeah, you just need uh, to send your number on later. So maybe uh, now we are in the end of this meeting on this event. Once again, thank you very, very much for everyone for joining us today. But before we could, uh, we would like to uh, remind you to fill out the feedback uh, to get an e-certificate and you may find out the link on the chat box. And we still have more upcoming episode for uh, the after class talk in 2021. So don't forget to follow our Instagram at IO Telecom Unif and ISBC Telecom University you might uh, find uh, the Buddy Club Instagram uh, on the IO account. And yeah, uh, don't forget to uh, looking for another infos and uh, register yourself uh, for another events. And now I would like to invite you to take a picture together so that we can uh, keep this beautiful moment and we can uh, remember about these days in the future later. Now, please kindly turn on your camera and put your best smile and pose. All right. We can take a picture right now. Everyone is ready. All right. One, two, three. Cheese. All right. Maybe one more. More exciting <laughs> pose, maybe. One, two, three. All right, beautiful. Everyone is so great. And I wish you all have a great Friday and a great weekend tomorrow. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you for your time. Uh, 
uh, I wish we can uh, remain uh, this friendship for the future. And thank you guys so much for attending this uh, event. And Wabillahi Taufiq Wadaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Salam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Wisnu. Terima kasih. Thank you for joining Thank us, Matthew. Christian. Thank you so much. It's really a great honor. Aisha. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Hey, Matt. Please, please keep safe and healthy always. Take care, Matt. Bye. Take care.